Jeremiah chapter 3. They say, if a man put away his wife, and she go from him, and become another man's, shall he return to her again. And the law is found in Deuteronomy 24, 34. It's a violation. To put away a wife, she marries someone else, and then she returns back to her former husband. So it shows that the Lord does honor the second marriage more than he does the first. Shall not the land be greatly polluted? Well, that's interesting. The land be polluted by uh, sins of marriages. For thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, talking to Israel. Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. So even though there's in the law, you play the harlot yourself, come back to me. Lift up thy eyes unto the high places, and that's the places of worship. And see where thou hast not been lying or lying with. In the ways hast thou set for them, as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredom and with thy wickedness. So they're sinning against the land. And in the end of Jeremiah, they're going to be forced out of the land. The marriages are wrong. They are looking to the high places to worship gods. And they're destroying the land of Israel by the testimony of God. The land of Israel, Jerusalem, was supposed to be the lighthouse, the city on a hill to come and find God. And when they come, all they're doing is finding sin. They're finding the gods that, to get to Jerusalem, the nations that they walk through, they're finding the gods that they pass through. There's no difference. You go into the churches today of America, you find no difference. They got the same worldly stuff. There's no sanctification. No division. Therefore, the showers have been withholding. Not El Nemo. It's not global warming. It's God. When a nation sins against God, he messes with the weather. And there has been no latter rain. The former and the latter rain were important rains in, in, in the land of Israel. That is how their crops were grown and, and sold and harvested. And thou hast a a whore's forehead. So somehow a whore was marked by her forehead. What? I mean, it makes it look like, I mean, were they running around without being uh, convicted? Were they running around without being judged? There's a whore right there. Okay, yo. Thou refusest to be ashamed will thou not from this time cry unto me God my father thou art the guide of my my youth they're not going to cry that will he God reserve his anger forever no he won't will he keep it to the end the end of the tribulation period you behold thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldst. That's an interesting word. Whatever they could do, they did. And that is what God in the Trinity said when they visited down the Tower of Babel. Man, what man thinks he, he can do. And he put a separation of language. Press one. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding, going backwards, not going up, going backwards, Israel has done? So she's not going to God. She's going away from God. 
go in the direction of God. She is going up upon every high mountain, but she's going backwards, it says. How do you go up a mountain, yet you're backsliding? And under every green tree, there have played the harlot. You're going up a mountain, but you're going backwards. And I said, after she had done all these things, God speaking, turn thou unto me. But she refused not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. So we're looking at the two nations of Judah and Israel. Israel was the first to go. And Judah saw it. And Judah saw Israel go into captivity. Yet Judah did nothing about her sins. You see people dying of cancer. You read about it, the Surgeon General tells you about it, and yet you still smoke. That's exactly what Judah's doing. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away. Adultery against God. By serving Satan and his gods. This is not a husband and wife adultery. This is the nation. God said, fine, if that's who you want, go. I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. That's interesting. God gave her a bill of divorcement. That's what it says right there. Because she committed adultery. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not. Didn't learn from her sister's sin. But went and played the harlot also. Now Josiah in verse 6, that's the king that did right. That's the one that went in the temple and cleaned it up and got right. But the people weren't right. Oh, let's get a Christian president. Why? If you had one, the nation would still be against him. The nation would be still against God. You think if we had a Christian president in the White House, all the sodomites will go back in the closet and there will be great revivals and everybody getting right and, and glory to God when we go preach on the streets, everyone's going to come up and, and want to know Jesus? Here is a proper king in verse 6 and they're doing just as worse as a nation that has been taken away has done. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredoms, that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stock. Now, that tells you right there, it's not a man with a wife, a wife with another man. Stones and stocks are the gods, the trees and the stones, statues. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah has not turned unto me with her whole heart, half-hearted, but frainingly, that means to pretend Hollywood actor and actresses, saith the Lord. They put a show, they put a, uh, you know, unbelieving, unmerited repentance of God. Oh, yeah, we had two buildings come down by terrorists. Oh, let's go for a natural day of prayer. God's just going to love us. Oh. Not even a week America went back in her sins. It's been fallen ever since. And the Lord said unto me, Jeremiah. This is a message. I mean, isn't this message just great? Jeremiah's got to go preach to these people. I mean, I don't stand on the street and say, You're an adulterer. You're a drunkard. 
Jeremiah is going to these people saying, listen, you just committed adultery. Well, not me. Yeah, against God you have, you whore. You imagine if I preach like Jeremiah preached on the street, they'd have to pass out pills and ambulances. People wouldn't be able to take it. The backslide Israel has justified herself more than treacherous Judah. And they made up for their own sins, made, made it light, called it nice little fairy tale words, and, you know, God is love. And Go and proclaim these words toward the north. Go to Israel, the northern tribes. And say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord. And I will not cause my anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, saith the Lord. And I will not keep anger forever. So God, listen, he's judging them. But he says, you know what? Come back to me. Get back to me. Only acknowledge thy iniquity. That thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God. And has scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. That means how that keeps showing up. And ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Reaching out to Israel, the northern tribes, to get right. Acknowledge your sins. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. They haven't been to Zion in Israel in a long time. He says, I'm married to you. You're my bride. The church is not the bride of God. It's the bride of Christ. The bride of God is Israel. Both Israel and Judah. I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. You want to take that one to any churches today? Understanding that your relationship to God? Oh, and then they use a perverted Bible and they use the worldly means? There's not much understanding of God when you use the world. And it shall come to pass, by the way, that shepherds and pastors, Taking care of the sheep. Israel is liking the sheep. It shall come to pass when you be multiplied and increase in the land. Children. In those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more. The ark of the covenant of the Lord. Neither shall it come to mind. Neither shall they remember it. Neither shall they visit it. Neither shall that be done anymore. It's not going to be the ark of the covenant according to uh, the Bible. It's not going to be the, the sole thing of Hollywood for Mr. Jones to go chase, chase an apple. He may try to go find the Ark of the Covenant, but he couldn't. He didn't go searching for the God of the Ark. Even the Philistines said, you know, well, what's that uproar? They're bringing God into the camp. No, it's just a box. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. Not today. And all the nations shall be gathered into it. If you don't know what that is, I'm going through Isaiah. That's the millennium. To the name of the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. To Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. They'll, they'll get right. And remember, we're addressing the northern tribes. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. They're going to be. They're not in unity today. Chapter sixteen, verse fifteen, twenty-three, eight, and Psalms one hundred and seven, verse three. There will be a unity again of Israel. And they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. Hebrews eight eight, Zechariah thirteen one, and Jeremiah twenty one thirty one. But I said, How shall I put thee among the children, and give thee a pleasant land, a goodly heritage of the host of the nation? And I said, Thou shalt call me my father, and shalt not turn away from me. So Israel will be God's children and his bride. 
That's where Jesus can say, I honor my father. You don't honor your father. You are of your father's Satan. Jesus completely denied the people that he were dealing with out of Jeremiah 3, 19. He's not your father, your father's Satan. See, the first advent, Jesus Christ did not come to, to bring Israel together and take care of the world and set up the kingdom. He came back for the, for the sins of the people. The nation's getting right and setting up his kingdom upon the throne. That will come back when he returns again the second time. Surely, as a wife treacherously departs from her husband, so have, I, so have ye dealt treacherously with me. It says right there. Israel is the one that's done wrong, not God. O house of Israel, saith the Lord. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping the supplications of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way. And they have forgotten the Lord their God. Doesn't this sound like America? Let me ask you a question, America. I think all the money says in God we trust. I think. Take any piece of money out of your wallet. Take any three public schools. One on the East Coast, one on the West Coast, and one somewhere in the middle of America. And stop every five, fifth child that comes out of, the, out of the front door and say, Excuse me, son. Yes. What's that say? In God, uh, we, uh, see, they're not teaching them English, but in reading. In God we trust, okay? Son, who is the God? What would the answer you get? Next fifth child, young young lady, little girl, what's that say? In God we trust. What God? Well, we're Catholics. We're diehard Roman Catholics. We go to church every every Saturday, and, 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 and you know, blah 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 blah. Stop the next fifth child. Oh, Allah, He's God. Next fifth child. We don't believe in God. There's no such thing as a God. We want that off the money. Next fifth child. Well, we're Mormons. Can I marry your wife? Next fifth child. Well, it can't be Jesus because Jesus is not God. Next fifth child. I mean, what answers are you going to get? You sure are not going to get an answer of maybe one in a hundred kids that you stop. Every fifth one will proclaim the God of the Bible. Because the God of the Bible is not allowed in the public school system. And then on church night, American Idol. <laughs> that may be a God mention. Forgotten the Lord God. I know it says Lord their God, but America has forgotten God. Return old backsliding children. You're going backwards again. They bend backwards. And I will heal your backsliding. So a backsliding condition is a medical condition that needs healing. And only God can heal. Walk up to one of these phonies you know, at a healing meeting. What's your problem, sir? I'm backsliding. Well, how can I heal you? Well, the Bible says that a backsliding person needs to be healed. And look at the conditions of the backsliding. Adultery against God, you're a harlot. This is something that a jacket swinging in your face ain't going to take care of. Behold, we come unto thee. 
for thou art the Lord our God. That's what they're going to say later. They're not saying that now, and they're not saying it during Jeremiah's time, because Israel goes into captivity, and Judah will go into captivity. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills. Is there salvation in false churches? That verse says it is. But it's not the salvation that is hope. Paul tells us that there's another Jesus. There's another gospel. There's another spirit. We've been in churches where people, you know, they're saved. They're not saved by the blessed hope. They got a salvation. Guess what? It's a vain hope, according to this verse. And I, I believe there's going to be a lot of people going to be standing at the great white throne judgment like, why am I here? And, they're, the, and Jesus himself says, they're going to walk up to him and say, well, Lord, didn't we blah, 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 blah. And he's going to say, I never knew you. That is a vain salvation. There are people in religions today, and I don't need to even call out the religion. From religions from sea to shining sea. They do whatever that religion tells them to do. And they believe they're going to go to wherever the paradise, whatever the heaven, whatever it's called in their religion. They believe they're going to reach the essentials by what they do. And when they die, they're going to find out it's vain. And what they hope for is not going to. And there are churches in America and there are religions in America just like this. What do you ask people? You going to heaven? Well, I hope so. And from the multitude of mountains. So there are religions out there. You go to mountains on a, on a pilgrimage. That's a vain salvation according to Jeremiah 3.23. Day is so long. I got Isaiah in the tongue. You talk to someone, well, I make a pilgrimage to such and such mountain. I have a guru on this mountain that we that we see. It's a vain salvation. What did, what did Jesus deal with that woman at the well? She says, well, you say we worship in this mountain, and I, we worship in this mountain. Jesus says, you know not what you worship, I believe it was. And he says, there's coming a day. Turn that John chapter 4 real quick. See, it's not mountains. It's not a place that you worship. Well, come to our church. No, it's a person. John chapter 4, it's, he says, oh. Oh, isn't that interesting, Matthew, Jeremiah 3? Let's just, I don't know if we'll finish this verse, but watch, watch. I just, didn't, I just, just realized what's going on here with, with Jeremiah 3. John chapter 4, verse 14. But whosoever drinketh this water shall that I shall give him he shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into eternal life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband. What have we just been talking about? We've been talking about adultery, a woman leaving her husband. Go call thy husband, and come hither. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, thou, thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast is not thy husband, and that thou saidest thou truly. And then verse 20, Our fathers, did we just see fathers? Shall call him father. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship? Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the, now run that back, that father, to Jeremiah 3, where is it? 3.19, my father. Jeremiah 3 and John chapter 4, I didn't even realize, the Lord sent me there matches there's there's adultery there's mountains and jesus said you know what 
you're worshiping mountains as a vain salvation. Truly the Lord our God is in the salvation of Israel. It is God, not a piece of dirt. You know why you worship dirt? Because Genesis 2 said we come from dirt. You're worshiping man. Mother Earth. No, it's not Mother Earth. It's Father God. Mother Earth did not one day have her water break and everything came to be. Matter of fact, God didn't break the water. He just flooded her out one day for 40 days and over a year. For shame has devoured the labor of our father from our youth, their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters. Shame it. You know what? You got the wrong salvation. We lie down in our shame. And our, confuse, and our confusion covers us. For we have sinned against the Lord our God. We and our fathers. From our youth even unto this day. And have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. That's what Adam did. Adam sinned against God and not doing what God told him to do. That's why we're in the mess we are today. Not listening to the word of God. You know why Israel's in the mess she's in today? Because she's not listening to what God said. And talk to a Jew. Oh, we, we, we obeyed a, your last book, which is not uh, Malachi. Your last book, which is Second Chronicles, tells you to go back to Jerusalem. You're not obeying the word. Where's the battlement around your house? You're not obeying the law. Three times a year, you're supposed to be going to the land of Israel. You're not doing it. What's the result? We have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. What's that today? What is the voice of the Lord our God? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Well, Paul wrote that. You think Paul just pulled that out of the... Uh, you know, thin years, saw it written on the bathroom wall somewhere. Oh, I like it. I think I'll use it. Now, that was inspired by the Holy Spirit. You know, man is the pen, but the Holy Spirit is the ink for inspiration. 